Hello guys and welcome to the second video in the how to write a novel series and in this video I'm going to be focusing on word processes for your computer or tablet. Now in my writing experience I like a place where I can plan my story, plan a world and build it and also plan my characters and alongside that then have a place to start writing the story. For a program that does both, Scrivener is probably one that you've heard of. It just has so many features, a good set of templates to get you started, offers different layouts, place for your research notes, place for your characters, worlds, setting up your arc. Basically, it offers everything that you need and it can all be neatly packed into one bit of software. Now the downside is because it offers everything, you then have to learn everything and learn how it works. So you'll have to be prepared to spend some time getting to know the software before actually using it properly. I actually used it for my Dark Array series when I was writing book one for it, Displaced, and it was nice to be able to refer back to everything within the same package. However, admittedly, I don't use it now. But it was really, really nice to plan the entire series arc within Scrivener. But I actually prefer writing the books somewhere else, which I'll get to later. It's available on Windows, Mac, and iOS. It does offer a free trial, so you can always test it out and get to know it before you make the purchase. Now, the price is quite steep at 47 quid, but I prefer that to the actual subscription-based models that you know so much software has these days. I prefer to just pay once own it for the rest of your life and be done with it. On iOS it's about $20 and if you want both the Mac and the Windows version, so two versions for different platforms, I think it's like 75 quid. Which again sounds really expensive but if it's going to allow you to write I would say it's worth the investment. But yeah it's not for everyone with the steep learning curve so pick up the free trial before you buy it and give it a test run and see if it's for you. The next bit of software is Microsoft Word, which most people are going to have used or heard of. It's actually what I write in now, just because it's the industry standard. Now, that's not saying that using other software is an industry standard, but I just know if I'm working in Microsoft Word and I need to send it to someone, there's a very high chance that they've got Microsoft Word as well. Like when I was sending it to my editor, she had Microsoft Word and she made the comments in her version of it. So when she sent it back, I got exactly what she was seeing and, you know, she obviously received exactly what I sent. So there was no sort of miscommunication or misformatting between each other. But yeah, it still has some features, not as many as Scrivener, but it still has a fair amount. If you uh, learn how to use the headings correctly, it can make it really, really easy for editing and formatting chapters. Now, again, this is a paid piece of software. It is $109.99, so £110 for a one-off purchase or you can pay $5.99 a month or $59.99 a year which includes the entire suite and it is available on Windows, Android, Mac and iOS and also it's worth mentioning if you do the monthly route you get access to a bit more space on OneDrive which is really really good for backing up your files but I'll talk about that later. Another alternative which I've mentioned before is Google Docs which is I probably annoy people when I say this but it's basically the same as Microsoft Word apart from Google Docs is always online so you need the internet to use Google Docs because you don't actually save your file onto your computer you write it in browser it saves in browser and you rely on Google service to obviously back up and look after it for you which they do plus side is it is completely free you don't have to pay a single penny and I find it's more convenient to share than word is because obviously it's already in browser you just need to type in someone's email address and they can view edit or comment on your book so perfect for beta reading or sending to editors and of course because it's in your browser like Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox or whatever takes your fancy it means that anyone that has access to the internet can view and edit your file whether it's Linux Windows Mac iPad Android they've all got access to it. And of course, it's always backed up because again, Google saves it for you. If you'd rather have a bit of software that actually saves to your computer, unlike Google, but like Microsoft Word, but is free, then you can check out LibreOffice, which includes something similar to Microsoft Word, but it's completely free with very similar features. And if you're on Android or iOS, I think it's called Collabora Office. It's open source, it's made by a community of people, runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and is generally the nicer option if you would rather not give your money to the bigger corporations or use a platform like Google. That said, when you save a file, you're most likely going to export into a format like .doc, which is at Microsoft Word's format, because again, it's an industry standard. Now, if you don't have the internet, but you have a computer, if it's Windows, you'll have something called Notepad. It's a very, very basic word processor, but you're able to write in it. And if that's all you have, something to get started in, something to save in, might end up looking a little bit complicated. Uh, the same basic word processor for Mac, I think is called Text Edit, which again is good enough for a start, but ideally you're gonna want something at least like LibreOffice 
which if you go to your library, you could probably download it and put it on a USB stick or something and then bring it back to your computer or borrow your friend's internet just to get started. Now on a slightly different vein, if you don't want to type or you can't type, there's something called Windows Speech Recognition, which allows you to talk and it writes down what you're talking. For Mac, I think it's in the settings in the keyboard area that has a dictate option. So on your computer, if you activate that, it generally works in any sort of application that you have open. So you can start talking and it'll start typing. And there is a voice typing function in Google Docs as well. For iOS and Android, I think there's GoodNote, Drafts, and Google Handwriting Input. Another option, if you've got a tablet and you can use a pen with it, so you can write on your touchscreen, apps like Google Handwriting Input, OneNote, and GoodNotes allow you to write with your hand and then have the ability to then convert your handwriting into actual text that the word processor can see and edit. Though I haven't actually used them myself, so I'm not quite sure how well they work, but I thought I'd just give you some of the other alternatives. Now, if you're writing on a computer, backing up is always one of the most important things that I stress to people. Because you only ever think of a backup once you wished you had a backup, which is never a good spot to be in. I've been in it myself, sadly more than once. So, ways of backing up your file, you've got <laughs> floppy disks, I was going to say, it's a little bit outdated now, uh, CDs, USB sticks that you can plug into your computer and you can copy or move your files onto a USB stick. I would say copy, so you've got a copy on your computer and you've got a copy on your USB stick. Here's one as an example, so you just pop it in your PC and it will come up under my computer and you can drag and drop or copy and paste your files onto the USB in case anything happens to your computer. Now the more seamless way of backing up, which if you use Google Docs, you don't have to worry because it's already backed up for you. But if you use Word or LibreOffice or any equivalent that saves onto your computer, you can use Dropbox, OneDrive, iCloud, or Google Drive. Now you have to set these up for Windows. OneDrive is usually the easiest to use because it comes pre-built, pre-installed into the system because it's owned by Microsoft. And if you save your files into the OneDrive folder on your computer, it will be backed up to the cloud, the internet. So if your computer breaks, you can go onto another computer, log in with your details and access the same files. For Mac, iCloud is the default option where if you save to iCloud, you can then access the documents that are in iCloud from another location. So for me, I have an iPad and a Windows laptop. I save to OneDrive from my laptop. It backs it up to the internet. So if my laptop breaks, I've still got the file. And also I can access the same file from my iPad and edit the same documents without having to do a thing. It just saves to it, automatically updates. So whatever device I've got, I can access my files on the go. And have peace of mind that if any of my machines break, all I need to do is just grab another computer and access it from there. With Dropbox, you need to download the software and install it on your computer. So that takes a little bit of time. I think Google Drive, you can download software, but I think you can do it in browser. So if you log into like your Gmail account and you type in Google Drive, you can access your Google Drive and you can upload in the browser your files. Again, I would go for something more seamless because if it's more seamless and it happens automatically, it means you don't have to think about it. Like when I save my files, I don't think about backing it up because it's, it's a thing that just happens. Uh, so you want to make it as easy as possible for yourself. So it's always backed up and you don't have to worry. But of course, these options, you obviously have to have internet for. If you don't, USB sticks, CDs, and that sort of thing generally work as well. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully it's been of some use. I uh, thought I'd just give a rundown of the software that is available to you, whether it's free, pre-installed, paid for, what I use, bits and pieces like that. But if you have any questions, just ask and I will be happy to help. Thank you for watching.